Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another episode of the one and only Reaction Time podcast, we think. Have we done research that we didn't steal this name from anyone else? So, uh, it doesn't matter because it's not a, it, it's its like property, it's not necessarily a, its own entity, so it's a product. Best Reaction Time podcast you'll ever hear. <laughs> yeah. Best. And you just... Anyway, I'm David, Steven's over there. Eric's down there. Um, we're here. It's it is the week of the World Championships, the final match. It's happening. It's time. Boys, are we ready for the final? The cats are ready. Meow meow. Oh gosh. <laughs> Eric's not ready for the final. God damn it! You're ruining my open. Okay, <laughs> Stephen, how long for the final are you? What? How ready for the final are you? I'm are you super hyped? ready. Yeah, like I, I'm gonna muster up the strength to wake up and watch it live, because I need to. I, I didn't, I didn't I watch, might. I didn't watch the sooning in uh, TES game, but like live, and I have many, many regrets. <laughs> Waking up to like <gasps> all of Twitter, losing. Eric the... and McGuire, are you ready for the World Championship Finals? Uh, I am so incredibly pumped to watch SOFM on a world final stage um, after watching him play on Snake for ages uh, with only really Flandre to work with 50% of the time as a when teammate. When Flandre worked and often when it didn't. Yes. And so like going from that into watching this roster, um, like really step it up and evolve during a world's run into this grand finals against Damwon, who have looked like the strongest team in the world. Like this is sick. I'm and really that's pumped. where we're going to kick it off is with the incredible performance of Suning gaming, beating the probable tournament favorites, top esports in a best of five, three to one early on Sunday morning in U.S. time or Sunday night in local time in China in the second all-Chinese matchup of the t of the bracket stage. So let's start with SOFM since, Eric, Eric that's where you started. We, we talked about if the, the matchup with Karsa was going to be one of the big keys to this series. What worked for SOFM? What set it, him over the top as... Um, Suning got the win. Um, well, uh, actually, I don't, surprisingly enough, um, uh, I don't think that SOFM on his own was too much what was going on in this series, but, uh, one big thing that I do want to call it is SOFM was able to win on tanks, uh, in this series, which was incredible to watch, uh, the Shen performance river in game shen. three uh river shen just showing up and uh absolutely chunking people was a delight um and uh and he even got a win on jarvin which karsa failed with earlier on in the tournament uh but uh overall like the like uh karsa also really showed up in this series and uh did his best to try and make these Lee Sin games work out uh both of them uh or both of them have a win on Lee Sin in this series, but uh, in the end, it was uh, lots of other things that changed up for Suning that really pushed them over. So I, one of the big talking points in this series has, has continued to be the emergence of Huan Fong, and in this case, on the flip side, the dissension almost of Jackie Love. What... Let, let's talk. go to that matchup since you didn't think the jungle matchup was as big of a factor and this one was. What went right for Wan Fung and what went wrong for Jackie Lung? Um, a, a part of it, uh, well, team fight positioning, really. Jackie Love's uh, positioning in some of these fights was very awful. Uh, and, uh, and to take some of the blame off of him in this series, a part of it could be just with like the comps that top was drafting and how they were trying to position on the map. He felt that he needed to be the one pushing forward, being aggressively positioned to make these fights work. Although the, uh, E over the wall on Ezreal into drag into, uh, yeah, dragon pit wasn't the best idea. 
Um, but then they were also putting you Yanja on Tom Kench duty again and trying to just like bail him out. And, uh, and it just wasn't enough, uh, versus Huang Fang, who, uh, even though sword art was playing engage supports going in Leona repeatedly. And then later on thresh, he was still able to navigate these team fights, provide a lot of damage and, uh, really outshine in uh, a lot of how the game played out. Um, like, uh, it's, it's the bot lane difference in this series versus when they played in the LPL playoffs was massive. So, um, like when I talk about Sooning evolving as a roster, like this is not the Sooning that showed up in LPL playoffs or in the LPL regular season. They've completely changed in terms of just how powerful they seem. And you can credit it in part to like Sword Art being slightly more aligned to the meta, but a lot of it just is growth and player evolution. Like um, in the top Sooning series in playoffs, top's bottom lane absolutely smashed Sword Art and Huang Fan in CS ending kill pressure. Uh, with uh, Jackie Love went 23 6 21 in that series with 781 damage a minute. Huang Fan only had 349 damage a mi per minute in that series. Um, and uh, like Sword Art died 15 times in that series. Uh, it was. It was brutal on both the bottom and top side of the map. And then that didn't happen uh, at all in this set. Even with like top supplying pressure to hold down Bin, uh, bot lane won on its own very hard. And uh, Bin held in there against 369, who had a complete non-impact of a series as well. So it was really impressive to see just how much better the, like uh, both the side lanes played in this particular game let alone the fact that uh, Angel went completely unpunished and even had a complete pop-off carry performance in Game 4, which Steven, was very unexpected. Steven, what impressed you the most about Sooning's performance? What one player stuck out to you the most? I obviously pay more attention to junglers because I my smooth brain can understand it. <laughs> um, but like looking at numbers and stuff, like... Angel not getting punished is is huge as well as like playing his game and playing his way and he had I think the best KDA besides Ben in the series so I don't know Jackie Love does have a and, and Hong Fong have a better KDA but still like oh wait no they don't I can't read no it doesn't matter it's it's, it's been far and away it, yeah Ben and then Angel <laughs> yeah yeah and so I think that goes to to say that that like even with the investment in top, Ben still played the game and still and not investing anything in punishing Angel, like he he was able to play the game too. So I think it's both of them, just not or Angel not being a, a liability, which I think was mentioned prior conversations that that would be a concern, especially going up against the likelihood of Knight. And then been still like drawing all of the investment from the enemy team and performing on top of that. A couple things I think are notable from Pick Ban in this series. Ezreal went four and zero in this series. I don't know if people noticed that. And Leona went three and zero plus one ban in game one. So yeah. that combination was it. Won it that bot lane won the last three games back to back to back. So may uh, not have been the decisive factor, but that's a thing to note. It sure did. Uh, a part of it is that Sword Art's Leona is incredible. Um, he didn't die. So, like one of the reasons I had Sword Art lower in my power rankings going into the whole world's event is that on Nautilus in LPL, which is primarily what he was allowed to play, he would die too much on these engage efforts. So he'd go in, he'd find these engages, his team would follow up, but he'd die pretty quickly. And on Leona, that wasn't happening. The, the uh, inherent tankiness in the kit on Leona right now just means that that doesn't happen. And then you could see him finding these sick engages in this match and then making it out alive repeatedly, which was pretty disgusting. Um, as, as far as like pick ban goes, the other big thing that I've seen called out a lot in this series is when Top was on red side, they... Uh, they would blind pick for they would blind pick Oriana for night, and then they'd still end up making this mistake of then like not getting three six nine a winning matchup in last pick, which is uh, or R five if that's your vernacular, <laughs> which is like a pretty big like sin as far as how uh, 
understanding of the meta goes, which is you want to have a counter matchup for at least one of your solo lanes so you can start building advantages. And instead, they were like uh, locking in this Orianna early, but then they would like save counter pick for support as opposed to for a top lane in the uh, bottom half of this thing. And then they'd still lose bot lane and 369 would lose lane to bin. And it was just like a complete disaster from how like that pick ban was organizing itself. Like if your plan is to lock Orn in this second rotation, um, why are you blind picking Oriana for night um, in game four when, you know, the Oriana pick hasn't been building huge advantages in mid lane against Angel and then also hasn't been like snowballing you into like these winning positions as much as you would like. The other, the other thing which kind of piggybacks off of what you were saying is that uh, Bin in this series, we, we noted the KDA, Bin had by far the best KDA in this series, 15, 4, and 18 across the series, and did it on the back of the one game that Suning lost in this series was his Orn game. And in the other three matchups, it was Wukong, W, Jax, Jax, WW. It getting him a counter matchup and it wasn't this gangplank because we know the gangplank had been a huge factor for him in previous parts of this this series wasn't wasn't in there at all it was banned in one game and beyond that wasn't a factor in their pick ban it, it turned out he played it perfectly against 369 who'd been one of the players in the hottest form of the tournament yeah plus How resolution that Steven <laughs> Like we, we knew Ben was a bit Ben 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 Ben, he was going to be the target and he was their win condition and I think they were for some reason allowed to play towards that and you just he, he look at his numbers he stomped. <laughs> Eric was was it was it mostly the pick band difference for the top lane? being as big of a gap as it was or was there some player skill involved too uh there's some player skill involved too like the wukong jace game uh like the wukong jace game he largely just survived in lane and then was able to start really taking an advantage but like uh both the jacks games he like was absorbing pressure and it was like sword art and huang fan either roaming or like sword art roaming while huang fan could safely farm in bot lane that would like end up with these like uh, big plays with SOFM and Sword Art grouping up and forcing these fights. Um, the Shen Leona combo onto the Jax is really disgusting. Uh, that was happening in that series. Um, Wait, that's illegal. and then also, um, and then uh, and so like, uh, and so that one that game really felt like uh, that game really felt big. Uh, Three Six Nine was building early CS advantages in these lanes, but then like wouldn't didn't do anything with it it really felt like it was isolated and then it couldn't do anything even if he had like these earlier lane advantageous matchups like technically renekton into jacks early has a bit of an advantage and you saw that very early but then after the team started moving across the map it dropped off very quickly um and then game four was actually a complete smash by angel which was very unexpected really weird yeah was, it was incredible. It's his uh, third Akali game this season. Yep. Uh, the other one was that G2 game where he yep. smashed. His other one was a loss against OMG where he like went like 0-4 or something. <laughs> so it's like this is, is that Eric, kind of out of left field. Yeah. Yeah. Eric, let me talk to Steven. Stop it. No. Even if you were a top one analyst looking at Sooning and prepping for Sooning this week in, in prep for the final... What's the one thing you would take away from this series that you needed to get ready for? If you're going to invest in shutting down Ben, you have to as well get an investment out of it. If, if it's an investment in your top laner that you're allocating to shut down or you're doing something where you're drawing the pressure to follow Ben. So, like, there is a mention that uh, Huang Fang was able to farm safely. Like, okay, so pressure and get your AD carry in, in that investment where he's going to be super farmed and they're going to emerge uh, because there's so much pressure put top. There, there has to be some kind of investment in your own team as well as drawing, putting pressure on Ben so he can't do anything. But he's proven that even with pressure, he's going to perform. So just don't go near him, I guess. <laughs> 
put it. Well, he he couldn't do the Orin, so force him onto tank picks. Eric, if same question, if you were a dumb one analyst looking at this team going into the final this week, what would is your main takeaway? Uh, I'd take Leona off the table, like put Sword Art onto something where he can't live after these engages, and then so you can get some prio. Uh, the trick, the uh, obviously you don't try and ban out SOFM. That's a terrible decision. Uh, he can win on a lot of champions, and he plays the game the exact same no matter which one he's on. So. I, I would recommend focusing on like taking the Leona off the table, putting him onto something that's a little less tanky so that he can't live on these engages, and then making sure you take advantage of your counter pick on red side. The other the other thing uh, that that I would look at is Huan Feng now two series in a row has won all three of the wins in the series on the same champion, but in two different series against two different teams. Last series all Jin wins. This series all Ezreal wins. So I would be hesitant to try banning him out, but if you can get, like, if you can coerce Sooning to not pick AD in their first three, take a look at banning banning out Ezreal Jin and seeing if you can force him onto maybe not necessarily a lower priority pick, but something that is less easy to carry on, like the Ash, for example, that's a common meta pick, or like we haven't seen him have success on the Caitlyn or show any preference to it that obviously Jackie Love went for in game three of this series. They tried the Caitlyn Lux lane. So it, it doesn't, if the situation comes to you, I think you maybe try to poke at Juan Fung's champion pool and see if you can find a hole in it, but I don't think you do it in first phase of bands. Right. So with that said, we've obviously noted that the other side of this bracket contains the other tournament favorite and Dom one gaming took care of their business, putting G2 esports out in another three to one series win in which uh, one, the positive note for G2 is that they broke Dom one's 25 straight game winning streak on blue side, which is completely absurd and made me think there was much more of the series than there was when it happens but in the end also lost the fastest game of worlds ever in game four of this series. So like, let's start with G2. I, game two went okay for them, but it all kind of fell apart. Eric, where did it mostly fall apart for them? So uh, I actually kind of want to even jump to game one where yeah. like, uh, so, you know, th they had a really... They did a very G2 thing with pick ban, which is they get the power pick in the Lucian, they lock it first rotation, and then they flex it bot lane, and uh, and then lock in the Silas for Caps. And I can understand it. Uh, Caps is really feeling himself. He uh, he hard carried on Silas in that series against Genji, um, and then and then it's clearly his preferred TF answer. So that you understand how they made these decisions and how it ended up happening very much a player led decision, uh, in my opinion. Uh, but the big problem we saw and like, what was fascinating to me with this is that caps played this game as far as how he positioned on the map, the exact same as he did against, uh, Genji in that first series where he aggressively walked forward as Silas. He is swag walked his way, uh, into these like really ridiculous fights, However, he actually just got mechanically outplayed every single time when that happened in this series, which didn't happen against Genji. Uh, Showmaker just dodges his abilities by stepping around them and then kills them repeatedly. And uh, and that wasn't just Showmaker doing so. It was also Barrel and Ghost on the bot side of the map. It was also Canyon. It was just that Caps wasn't good enough to win them that game. And that was, to me, the big death knell for G2 from the get-go on this series was that uh, he played the exact same. This was not like, um, this was not like him like having a fall off from the previous series. He went into it with the same mentality. He went into it trying the same shit. Same with Mickey, and they just got outplayed. And that's uh, that's really brutal as far as a way to go. But that's what happened. Steven, I want to go to you for the next part of this because I I lead, led with game two because in game two it may have been Dom one who had the perhaps too much thought into their pick ban 
as Nuguri wanted to flex on the kids and pick the Fiora. Mm-hmm. And then it went really badly for him. <laughs> yeah. It... So what it like it it's not just that. The top lane matchups in this series were weird all across the board. What did you see in the Nuguri Wonder matchup? So looking at it like I feel like Wonder came in hot. They still lost the first game. Uh, they, he picked a, another carry top to to go into the Fiora. Felt good off of that, and then went into tanks. And like I, I don't like he can play tanks. He could do really well on tanks, and that's not the issue. But I just wondered if there's some kind of like head game. Like I know the G two is very like uh, I want to do this, so like just let me do it kind of mentality. I, did, did Wonder really want to go onto tanks after coming off that win? I don't know. And it doesn't seem like he performed after that. So, so they also didn't prioritize Wonder and Pickban at all. Mm-hmm. So, like he actually like locked this Camille first, and then Fiora was the counter pick chosen into it, which is a known laning counter pick. But it it didn't play out that way early. No. And then, uh, and then, uh, and then they thought the Lulu was going to be flex support most likely in game three. And then, uh, so then they lock a tank top lane. Which like, Lulu's the Lulu. He's played top Lulu in this tournament. Yes. Right. So and then uh and then needless to say that got punished uh very hard. And then and then game four, uh it was a tank v tank top lane matchup, and it still didn't go their way. And that was the that was the first game in this series that top or that Damwon didn't spam ban tanks in first round of pick ban. Uh, like in every other game before this, this series, they were banning Shen, they were banning Orn, they were banning Volibear repeatedly against G2, um, both against Wonder and Top, but also Yankos in mm-hmm. the jungle to force him into these like scaling matchups uh, where he still didn't look very good. The, in terms of the pick ban, uh, as I do often like to look at, there, it, Ezreal, 4 0 in the other semifinal. Uh, one and O oh in this series with G 2s one win, but Ghost gets three wins on three different carries in Jin, Ash, and Caitlyn. Shows a little bit more flexibility laning into perks, and I think, Lord be praised for those of us who don't enjoy watching it. The last of the Senna players is dead. <laughs> I don't think we will see Senna in the final, and I am okay with that. Because Jackie Love and Perks were two of the notable Senna players across the course of this tournament. And they're both done now. And that kind of makes me happy from a game-watching perspective. Yeah. But it, what the, the TF Silas matchup that happened three times this series, which looked so good for G2 on the Silas side of it in their quarterfinal. And then TF they couldn't do it. In that matchup in this series. What was different? And it was, it was, Caps got a win on TF in game two as well. So it wasn't just. Into the Silas. But... Yeah. Um, a big part of it was that Silas couldn't answer TF roams very effectively. Uh, both of them were much better at making sure they had odd numbers, uh, odd number advantages in these side lane plays uh, by TF backing out more. So that, and then them being aware of which ultimate Silas had going into these fights. Also, uh, when Caps was on Silas on that side of this matchup, he uh, he entered a bit, <laughs> and that that also makes it a lot harder to build these advantages or to like actually take advantage and follow up, engage on these fights. Um, uh, there were also just like lots of uh, mechanical like outplays where, uh, and not even in that matchup itself, but like there were a lot of four v four spot lane or five v five spot lane or extended fights in that vicinity where ghost and barrel are dodging skill shots. And then, um, and then it doesn't matter if you come in with this flank play, if, uh, if you're missing your abilities and the other team is hitting theirs is what it boils down to. And gold card is a lot easier to hit. Um, so it, it, it really did feel like it was just like the, the way that the map was being played, which is focused around bot side. And then, um, Damwon's bot side absorbing that pressure just made it very hard for the Silas team to get ahead enough in these games. 
Yeah, and, and I think there's something to be said that maybe like the Silas matchup isn't as strong when you know how to play it, and the Twist of Fate can't just simply like back off and get an advantage, uh, like in a side lane, as long as he doesn't step up and get like I, I'm not sure on the the Silas, but it's like the level three like all in like combo with the enhanced autos and like if you don't get that kill like are you going to be viable enough to stop the realms right uh so silos actually works better kind of to follow up on that with the pressure jungler where you have uh where you have cc that can show up in gank your lane to kill tf mm -hmm. before the realms come out and uh they were banning volibear and they didn't put yankos on a ganking jungler they put him on kindred a lot in this series and that didn't look very strong even though one of their wins or their no. single win was when he was on kindred um there was a there was a lot happening in that game it was very fun to watch uh but but it didn't look very good for yankos and how these games were playing out yeah and i think the when you have a kindred jungle in and you win with it, it it comes from the way you combo it so they had twisted fate and camille which is great for for kindred in my opinion because you you have lane gank opportunities the team fights are completely within your control where you can dictate the go button and then you can dictate the disengage with the kindred ult um that was the only time they had a like a good matchup with that like kindred ganking for akali is kind of whack yeah, and then then they Caps also it. got completely bodied in that Akali <laughs> versus Syndra yeah. matchup. Yeah, so very brutal. <laughs> Showmaker good turns out. Showmaker yeah. good. <laughs> um, let let's return to a question I already asked once and flip it on its head. If you were a Sooning analyst prepping this week for Dom One, Eric, do you poop yourself or do you see something you can look at here? Uh, step one, uh, G2 didn't prioritize getting wonder counter picks. Uh, like both of his Camille games were locking or sorry, his one Camille game and the Renekton game were them locking his pick before, uh, not like before, uh, damn one had locked theirs. And then later on was falling for flex picks. Um, so as, a, as sooning, I would just. Do what you did in, in the match with Top and wait to get Bin a winning lane matchup against Nuggery, if at all possible, especially in these red side games. Um, the other big thing I would do uh, is, uh, you know, I don't know, actually. Uh, don't let Canyon play Graves, I guess, because his Graves is really good. And uh, he definitely was able to pressure advantages in that matchup repeatedly. What so did you that, that's the game? game. Sorry, what? The Hecarim game in game one. I thought that was an interesting pick to pull out. Uh, it was really good into this Lilia, because, uh, like... Uh, Hecarim's the better version. Uh, in essence, yes. Also, they drafted Lilia with no long-range no follow-up CP. And so, like, there was no Ornhorn, there was no Ash Arrow, there was no Jin W, there was nothing. But so, like, Yanko was very much in a, tr in a troublesome position there. I guess... So they, like, they did uh, ban the 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 Orn and Ash. So like it, it, it there's just some you're, when you're acting predictably and like if we can figure it out, I'm hoping that the analysts and coaching staff for <laughs> Worlds teams can figure out like oh they have drafted Lilia, which is useless without long range in game. Let the uh, engage. Let's take that away and then match it with global alts. Uh, Hecarim being borderline just because he's he's fast. He's got to go fast. And Hecarim, Leona, TF, Jin, Gangplank is dirty. It's gross. It's a very powerful pick comp. And then Hecarim does a lot of damage and scales well. So like that's that's kind of the nuts and bolts of it. Hecarim's borderline on the top tier junglers in this meta right now. He just doesn't he just has been much out there play a lot this tournament. Yeah. Like he's been he's been around like it's known that he's around but he just hasn't gotten played at the tournament right. basically at all yeah um uh i think self-made had a couple hecarim games that uh in their like and i think those were in their losses and that like wasn't earlier, yeah that was not his fault um cough so like that's kind of how i feel about it um uh and uh like 
I don't think that that side of this matchup will matter as much, partly because I don't believe SOFM really prioritizes playing Lilia at all. They don't really need to prioritize SOFM's champion pool. So, like, I don't expect that to be the jungle matchup. I expect it could be a lot of graves into whatever SOFM plays, uh, which will be fascinating. Um, one of the things that I've heard called out is that uh, Damwon still uh, Damwon still plays the map in a fairly one three one sense, and uh, and LPL teams don't do that. Uh, they they hard fight. So like it could be that their play would be um, take safe. Uh, ch safe mobile champions you can put in these side lanes out of the picture and then uh, uh and then draft your semi globals like steven mentioned into it so that you can then uh, hard force on the person who's left on their lonesome um and that would be another good way to take these advantages because um because like punishing people who are on their own in numbers advantages is a much easier and safer way to win against damn one than to try and like fight them straight up 3v3 or something where you're just giving windows for these individual mechanical outplays like what G2 was running into. And, and I think that's where Sooning does have an advantage into the, the damn one game. They know how to play safe in lane and not just run it down repeatedly and get mechanically outplayed and int just, just enough. And then they know how to draft to their player's advantage. They're not necessarily like meta slaves. They can play what they know compositionally works with their team, which I don't think G2 did. They just, like, got some garage sale champs after they got found out by drafting very meta things, and then G2 has to style in lane, and then when that doesn't work, they're like, meh. World of Warcraft's a thing. Steven, if you were a Sooning analyst prepping for Dom 1, what would you target? Hmm. So... I think if you can have Angel be protected, where he apparently he can pop off, but as long as he's not hindering, like SOFM and Ben and like everyone else, we is a known factor. And then I, I mean, I, like now that I'm thinking about it, like Angel really hasn't hindered the game at all. So I, I think you just have to pick your team comp. Don't let your like if you if you if you're prioritizing something, you have to complete the Exodia pieces or or, or at least get something that works. I, I think we're seeing more often than not if you're drafting something early and you're prioritizing, it's it's either super obvious and you get banned out and then you have to like not find the options and then it just doesn't work anymore and you're severely punished for it or you can flex around and, and figure out what's best for your team and that is just like get been the winning matchup i think protecting angel was the where i was going to go to mm -hmm. i if if you if you look at like if you take the matchups and just look at them one to one like who do we think has an advantage i think ben nuggery is a really close matchup that could go either way I think the bot lanes are a really close matchup that could go either way. Juan Punk Sorda have had a great tournament. Ghost and Barrel have had a great tournament. They've been exceptionally good. I think those go either way. And then you have the ones that I think are tilted because I think Sword, I think Showmaker into Angel is a big strength for Dom Juan. And I think SOFM into Canyon could be a strength for Sooning to look at. So I think if I were prepping for this as Sooning, I would be looking to see how how I can keep Angel safe without hindering the rest of the map. Basically, exactly like Steven said, because that feels like my weak spot. And, and, and a good way to do that is maybe just take TF out so you're not putting Angel on Silas or risking that he'll... No? Or... Well, they're not going to lock Silas for Angel. That's, okay. not, that's, that's not, not what they're going to do. <laughs> it's, it's very unlikely, uh -huh. I, I guess I should say. Because, like... Their, their main protection picks for Angel, historically, even before Worlds, are, are Syndra, are Zoe, are Orianna, and then he pulled out the Azir, right? And and Galio. Like, those are, like, the champions that are pretty meta that then Angel could be on. I would, Syndra as Damwon... series, by the way, in, uh, in what? the Sooning series. Syndra was banned the whole series. Yeah, and it was very high ban rate in the G2 Dam 1 1 too. Mm -hmm. I would not be surprised if Dam 1 keeps Syndra off the table and then also tries to take Zoe 
off the table too. Because one of the other things we've really seen in like the knockout stage of this tournament is a fall off in Oriana's power in these games. Like these teams don't lose lane as hard to Oriana as we were seeing in group stage even, but definitely in play-ins. And then also teams are better at positioning these team fights to not get blown up. And like a lot more matters about picks than about these like walking into each other to get five man shock waved. Um, so with that in mind, like I'd feel comfortable like forcing them to blind pick Oriana for Angel, maybe even him being on Galio, and then letting Showmaker style on that lane as Damwon, uh, and taking out like the the Zoe, which uh, which like obviously you know a good Zoe play. You know, uh, Steven, you know what the sign of a skilled Zoe player is? Hitting bubbles. It's when you get a redemption drop on on first minion wave. That's that's what the sign of a skilled Zoe player is. Yeah. So so take Zoe skill out of the equation, um, and then that range safety. Also, he doesn't look bad on that champion. He looks really solid. So like, take that protection away. Uh, don't let him play Syndra. And then uh, it makes it really easy, I think, to build an advantage in that lane if you actually pick a power pick or something that can punish for Showmaker. Uh, yes, I looking at these pick bans too. Sooning were actually the ones that were banning the Syndra lol series. They weren't gonna get away with getting it. I think they also have to ban Lucian. Sooning does, because I don't think Angel can play Lucian from what they've shown in this tournament. And if you give Showmaker Lucian, that's gonna be a problem for you. So that's another pick that I, I expect not to see, but it, it means that Sooning doesn't have much to play with in their first three bans and that may become a problem if there's something that pops out like in this their first three in these games, it was Lucian and Syndra in all three games, and then either Caitlyn or Nidalee. And Canyon Nidalee is a thing you got to worry about. So I, I think that Nidalee could be there. And then you, if you go in knowing what Sooning's going to ban, that's a problem. Yeah. Ha have Damwon played much else besides like 1 3 1 comps? It's not even necessarily that they play 1 3 1 comps, mm -hmm. it's that how they allocate people on the map is very one three one. So they, they make sure to eat all lanes of CS that are funneling into their side of the map. So like they will have Nuggery or Showmaker answering these waves on weak side in order to make sure they're getting all possible gold at all times. Sometimes gets off to an O two O three start because he greets for win. Mm -hmm. That happens yeah. a lot. There's a yeah. reason that there's a meme of Nuggery's O two power spike. <laughs> right. And, uh, and so it's very punishable, like, if you're willing to then over-invest to, like, kill them, and then set up, like, if you kill Nuggery, like, you know, uh, 30 seconds before Dragon Spawn or 20 seconds before Dragon Spawn, and then you just show up, and then you get the free objective, like, that's really big in this meta, um, even if you lost a little bit of side wave gold with the minions. Uh, but it's not, an, like, that's that's the big thing that, has been called out for like potentially Damwon's shortcoming in this series is that um, they will grade for these side lanes and, and like you can punish them for that. I wouldn't necessarily say one through one comps because Kennen, which is one of Nuggery's best like side lane pressure champions, is a actually still a team fight champion because he's doing the AP Kennen build. He's not doing the on nonsense on hit stuff. So they still have like a really solid team fight. Um, you know, the Lulu is a team fight champion that bullies lane. It's not like a side lane threat. It's so it's it's not really the comp. It's it's like how they play on the map. All right, boys, it's time. Eric, who wins? Uh damn one. In how many games? Ooh, uh <laughs> I'm gonna say four. Cause uh with red side advantage playing how it is, I'm assuming they get the one blue side upside, which is how they get it. Steven, who wins? I think Sooning can take it. In how many? Um, let's let's meme and say it, it's three three two Sooning all the way. So yeah. Okay, Dom one and three. All right. Oh three. We have three different. We, we are gonna continue the the what? This will be the third year in a row that the final will be a three zero sweep. Oof. I'm 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 calling it right now. That's what it's gonna be. That would make but me sad. She's not in this one. Don't care. Oh, the, okay. the series has big old mid-diff written all over it, and I'm ready for it. All right. Well, I thought that with, 
every round so far. <laughs> it hasn't happened yet. I believe in filmmaker. I've been riding this damn one train since the first episode we recorded of this podcast. Dom won a win tournament. Has has so how many games has Dem one dropped? Is it two? one in this series? And then one in groups. Quarters. One in groups. Then, yeah. Two. So two games. Yeah. Wow. That's. And then none in LCK playoffs. <sighs> like two in LCK summer split. I think if I'm remembering right. It's a really, really dominant season. They're really and good. Like, yeah. And what's really fascinating with this year, right, is like the top team from both uh, LEC G2 and the top team from uh, L- uh, LCK Damwon are like have shown up to be like, you know, head and shoulders above their competition going into this tournament. I both in terms of play. Bob Templar's comments on the other Korean teams going around this week of, yeah, the other Korean teams still aren't very good. Yeah. And so, like, uh, it's, and, that's really fascinating. Whereas uh, LPL, like all of them still Stacked. look taller. And, uh, and so like going into next year, that'll be really sweet, especially and, if we get more international play. Let's just remember that LPL sent these four teams to the tournament. The fifth and pl- sixth place teams were the last two world champions. With so largely consistent forgot. rosters. Like, like in IG and F- yeah, IG and FPX still looked really good, and like many people actually had one of them beating out Suning to make it to this tournament. Um, Suning, who are now in the finals, um, so it's it's crazy. Uh, and then like even with that, like the bottom tier LPL teams like still look really solid, and they rebuild and they rebuild hard with like lots of young talent, bringing in new blood. V five is sick. Um, their run got knocked out by Suning in playoffs, but like watching V5 versus Dam One would have been great stuff because V5 is one of the other teams that actually plays Pantheon bot lane well. Um, we believe in people. God. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really just wanted Freak to have to say that on on Cat. <laughs> that's that's all I really wanted. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's 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 really exciting. Um, Eric, you know, brand new ADC for OMG looks sick. So I mean, there's a lot. Wouldn't you? Yeah, I would say that. Um, okay. Well, the other thing I forgot to ask while we were doing our picks, Steven, you think Sooning is going to win? What one Sooning World skin do you want to see after Sooning's victory? Uh, you get to pick one. Oh man, just one. Okay. Is it Sooning Gangplank? It's either Sooning Gangplank or River Shen, but it actually like has to be themed around like being a River Shen. That's that's my requirement. Is Lee Sin going to get his third esports skin if Sooning wins? The answer is probably yes. By the way, <laughs> I it's it's. it's, it's SOFM's an innovator and he played great games on it. Like I hate it, but it's what it's gonna be. Could be I'd, love to have a, I'd love to have a Jin skin and uh and when he alts it's like a lion roaring. I think that would be Boom, sick. Yeah, uh get Eric, the sound effect in there. What one Dom one skin would you like to see as a world champion skin in the game? Oh Pantheon and when he alts in you get the logo. So he just like flies in, and then there's a logo there. Yeah. I I want uh, Dom want Lulu, and <laughs> and you just when when you um when you what's it called when you W somebody they just turn into a giant like weird three D looking Dom one logo, <laughs> <laughs> like a polygonal Dom one logo. <laughs> Polygon bullshit thing. Well, or you have it turn into one of the team logos from teams they stomped to get to the finals. So oh. like a little dragon axe or a little Bull samurai right. samurai Bull axe Bull or like Bull a little Bull lion. Bull yeah. yeah. I like it. I like I like the thought. Come to us for Riot Skins team. <laughs> uh okay, last last thoughts on on the side content. Boys, have you watched the music video for KDA's more? Yeah. Are are you in? Are you in on more? It had Seraphine um, in it. I'm I'm okay with the music. Uh so what worries me is the Seraphine bit 
feels kind of like plugged in after the fact, almost like Spider-Man in the Avengers movies. So uh, if they have that in more music videos where it's like the Seraphine content feels like tacked on on the end and it's not actually inclusive, that to me is like a very clear sign that uh, there were like um, that Seraphine was added in late. And that's that's really un unfortunate but like uh songs song was okay yeah. yeah the animation was good i like i'm i have this desire to just like be like yes everything's great just so we can get more of it but like if you compare it to giants which was granted a very different style um i liked that style a lot more um and then when you compare it to like the season oh what's the 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 orchestral version of warriors with that which is just so like oh man that's just so hard to beat yep so uh, here here's my hot take that i don't actually think is that hot having been around the internet today uh the more music video was the second best riot produced video content that they put out today uh, because if y'all didn't see the little Wild Rift trailer they put out, it's a banger. It looks so good. Wild and Rift it's, looks so uh, good. I I I am uh, what what's what's the word? I I am a jinx simp, but like <laughs> I, guilty as charged. But like it's also a really good video. I just hope that they can like revisit the core game and make it as polished looking as they've done with wild rift and yes i understand it's a full rebuild up but do it do it cowards do you have any further animation thoughts um animation thoughts um i love the world's trailer uh for the finals with like i love all their ar stuff like like i i i think it's fantastic every time uh how they did this one with the elder dragon statue being there and then the ground around it showing this skyline that's so cool look Uh, i'm gonna say the same thing i say every year riot does spectacle for the world's final better than anything else in the world the Olympics, the Super Bowl, I don't give a shit. Riot does this better than anybody, even more so when it takes place in China. Like, I I still, I can't tell you guys how many people I have just shown the video of the opening ceremony from the Bird's Nest in, what, 2016, 2017, with the AR Elder Dragon flying in. Like, that was unreal. And even in a COVID world, even in a world where there is going to be a minimal amount of live fans at this arena, I don't think Riot's going to slack on what this opening ceremony is going to look like. I'm as hyped for that as I am for the game. Yeah, everything seems super baller so far from what I've seen spoiled. And then, uh, like, I think it actually gives them more leeway to go absolutely ballistic with this, that there's yep. going to be fewer people in the live arena because they have more space to work with. Yeah, they've actually um, being on like the marketing innovation side and, and seeing some of Trindamir's talks with like high ups, um, they really use that as a marketing point of investing for esports part of this, and as well as like I, I don't know this for sure, but I'm pretty sure they use this as consulting kind of things. Like, look at this thing we did. Like, we can provide this for your venues and your stuff. So, I, I this is just like this is their like unlimited portfolio piece builder and then they go out and, and sell and make more money off of this and that's how you get your ROI on the eSport part of it even though like t- I, I don't know if that's even true anymore like technically they are operating at a loss for a long time but this was the stuff that they put in there to start getting money back on those investments so they're always going to go all out and they should go all out because they're really pushing uh, AR technology and uh, like virtual experience um, in a like large stadium environment, which I think we'll start seeing transition over into uh, other sporting events like football and baseball and all that. All right, last question, same as it always is, Eric. What you been playing this week? What have I been playing this week? 
Um, let's see. Was it just more Teemo? Might have just been more Teemo. Why are you so cruel? You know who had a great part in the Wild Rift trailer today? It was Teemo. Second only to Blitzcrank. I'll sim for some Dude, Blitzcrank. The, the Teemo Blitz romance was the best part of that video. Yeah. I'm just saying. Our rolling golem does, in fact, gather no moss. It happens to be two of Eric's most played champions. That's a thing. <laughs> Steven, what you been playing this week? I actually haven't gotten to touch the game. What have you all. been dreaming about playing this week? Oh, man. I want to play some Malphite Jungle. You've been thinking about Malphite? Yeah, I've been thinking so about Malphite, I've that big been, rock body. <laughs> I've, been, I've been playing a little bit of the game this week, but I, as a filthy casual, don't play real games. I only play Earth. And I, I remembered my favorite ever thing in Earth this week and played an excellent game of it, which is on Hit Bard. Uh, it's, it's the best. You're going to give you them just, the tingles? Right? You just get a Rage Blade, and then you get other stuff, and then you win. When I played it in the last Earth season, last year during Worlds, I got a pentakill on it, 2v5. Because <laughs> it's stupid. Congratulations. It's I did not do as well on it in the games I've played on it this week, because it turns out playing Bard with needing to auto-attack things into things that have a longer auto-attack range into you, like Jin, which everyone spams in Earth, is unfortunate and very annoying. But it's still playable. You just got to hit your R, and then it's fun. Have they made a name for, like, the A Million Infinity Edge Jins? Like, that build where you shoot the gun and you just, like, fly off into space? It's the fast, bro. It's just go fast. <laughs> go no, fast, it's Jin. Fast. It's the fast. The fast, That's the, ah. You get to 100%, you get to 100% crit, so that you crit every auto, and then you build Swifties, and then you just go. I think it's a perfect opportunity to call it Gen Air, but that's just me. The only problem with the fast build, because I also play a lot of that, is that you you have to auto attack once to actually get moving. <laughs> and if you can't auto attack once and then just get one shot by an Evelyn going onto your face, it's it's you, you, you don't get to auto attack and then you die. <laughs> Tragic. Right. So anyway, that's all for this week. We'll be back next week with a recap of the world championship and the end of it as november begins and after that if i remember right we would next record if we stick to wednesdays on what would that be the uh fourth of november so that is a little under two weeks away from the official opening of riot free agency so if we stick to our normal schedule, we'll have a world's recap for you next week. And in two weeks, we will finally talk, as Steven's been trying to do for like three weeks now, about North American League of Legends free agency. Because at that point, half of the rumors will probably be confirmed based on the rate at which we're getting leaks at this point. <sighs> and yes, we're going to wait two weeks to talk about head coach Bjergsen, because we do need to talk about that. But two weeks. So, um, as usual, Steven, Funky Plug, go. Go to FunkyGames.com. It's a link tree now for your convenience. You can get cool merch there, like a nostalgia shirt. It's awesome. Also, subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can see our content. That would be nice, because I know you all don't subscribe. Like, subscribe, comments, all the good jazz, as usual. Share it amongst your friends on your social media networks in your discord channels do the thing market for us <laughs> uh anyway as always reach out if you've got stuff i'm on twitter at prof cedar steven's on twitter at fnky ireland with a three eric's on pink on twitter at dark penguin with a four in dark and the and i hate y'all's twitter handles um <laughs> And, and yeah, that's about it. So we'll be back next week with a world cap of the spectacle and the games themselves. And that'll be it for us. So for Steven and Eric, I'm David. This has been the Reaction Time Podcast. We will see you next time.